I thought it was you know, really interesting to that you talk a lot about the nature of fame and the corrosive nature of fame. And I mean, how, you know, how, how have you felt about that balance in terms of being somebody who basically your job is to make people famous, to make sure they're known because that's how they, that's how you f define success in entertainment and, and, and you make money. And at the same time, balancing it out with like this, like you said, this kind of this, you know, sanctuary mentality that, you know, that is your house, your kitchen, your friends. It's like, you know, how, what was that balance? Was that a difficult balance for you to kind of maintain? Not this, not uh, no, not really. I mean, I, I I've always felt that um, honesty is really what gets you through anything. Um, so I realized that my occupation was one that could really hurt people, um, and I felt it was really important for me to warn people that I could really hurt them. But I never felt like I had an obligation to determine what their dreams were. And if their dream was to do something, as long as I inform them of the consequences, everything has consequences. There's nothing that doesn't have consequences. Um, and the consequences of, of celebrity is, is fame, and the consequence of fame is, is um, very hard not to hurt yourself. It's very rare that a famous person doesn't hurt themselves in some way, um, whether it's um, in their personal relationships and their drug intake, and it, it, it's, it's, not a, it, it's not a healthy, um, it, it's not good for life. We call it um, the toxic waste of celebrity is fame. And it is toxic, and it's um, it's like, It's a funhouse mirror distortion of reality. But, Unless you meet somebody who has been the master of both worlds and didn't give up his uh, civilian status. Yeah, and obviously you get the cool side of it as well, as you say, like going to the luau with the live Madame Tussauds, it's like, you know, there's a thrill that comes with that as well. Well, it, it, I, I, I'm not anti-fame. It's just, um, I guess, you know, when, I, when Shep finally said yes is when my, my son, Spike was born, and it sort of just was like, you know, because I have cousins, second cousins in England, and I'd be like, what do you want to do for a living? And they're like, be famous? <laughs> I'd be like, why would you, like, celebrity used to be being celebrated for achievement. It has now a devalued currency, and, and there's a very strange thing of one's willingness to give up one's privacy slash dignity in order to get this thing that, as Shep has said, has no intrinsic value. And uh, I don't know. I just wanted to be a voice out there reminding people that really it's all about creativity and making stuff. And it's kind of, it's not an end game. It's a, it's a byproduct, you know. I think it's a really serious problem today is that the goal for people is to become famous, not really what the consequences are. It looks like it's just a beautiful ride. Mm -hmm. And... Um, I get, you know, in early in my career, I would get a lot of calls from friends whose kids were going to culinary school, and could I get them a job at Danielle's, or could I get them a job at Wolfgang's? Now the same calls come in, and can I get them on Top Chef? Mm -hmm. Nobody really cares about the craft. They care about the fame, not r with no recognition. So I think one of the things that um, I'm happy Mike talked about in the movie is, you know, what the consequences are of fame, at least to get someone thinking about it. Mm 